and welcome to Stationery at 4. I'm really keen on using my new pen, so I thought I'd get to it and do a quick first impressions unboxing of my new fountain pen, which is the Opus 88 Fantasia. I bought this pen at the Vancouver Pen Shop, took advantage of a really great sale that they were having, and figured uh, it would be a good opportunity to acquire a brown pen, which is what I've been looking for. So without further ado, let's take a look. So let's just start with the box itself. Opus 88, fine writing instruments. Nothing fancy about the box, it's a cardboard box. Opus 88 Fantasia. And I bought this, it retails, as you can see there, for about 180 bucks, at least it did at the Vancouver Pen Shop. And I got a sale on it for 20% off, which is a sale that they're having right now. <clears throat> so, opening this, taking the sleeve off. Again, just a regular black box. And opening that up, we have a little instruction manual. Whoops. Instruction manual. Looks like we've got an extra O-ring. And the pen itself. With an eyedropper. So this pen's a little bit different in the sense that it is an eyedropper filled pen. Well, I mean, let's just start out with the aesthetics of the pen here first. It's a beautiful brown ebonite cap with an acrylic body that's translucent. This is the Finial Opus 88 Fantasia. And there's a, a line in here, a little divot. Looks kind of like a screwdriver head, and it actually is. This is the bottom. This is the ebonite uh, bottom here. And it's a screw-on type. Looks like a fairly small pen when you actually uncap it. But it's meant to have the cap screwed on to the back. So there's threads on the back. And screws on the cotton. I bought this in a fine nib. It's a Jowo number no. five, I believe. I'll have to double check. Beautiful detailing on the finial. Not on the finial, sorry. On the nib itself. And yeah, just a, a pleasant pen to look at. Now, I haven't actually used the eyedropper mechanism before, but the idea here is, let's just take a quick look at the instructions is to fill the pen body and it's my first time doing that so we're going to be taking the grip section off using an eyedropper and filling it up into the barrel twisting it back on and use the cap so here it is so this is going to be interesting using the cap top flat head driver we're going to be taking that and opening the bottom of the pen to release some air into it in order for it to to draw the ink into the nib section here as well. So seems fairly straightforward. So let's just go ahead and dismantle the pen. And that's where the O-ring o is. This is the nib section or the grip section. And inside here is, I'm not sure if that can be seen, kind of like a plunger or something inside of it. But that's basically where this back of this cap, back of the pen, allows you to draw in some air and get the ink flowing. You can also stop ink flow by completely closing that and it shuts off. It's a shut off valve, I guess, shut off mechanism to stop the ink draw. Okay, so let's just set those things aside for a second here. Grab our eyedropper. 
And the other thing I bought, bought at the Vancouver pen shop was this beautiful ink. Now, brown ink for a brown pen. This is a Van Pen 86 made specifically by Robert Oster uh, and specifically for the Vancouver pen shop. And so I figured why not take advantage of their cool special and buy myself this ink. <laughs> Let that roll off. So using this to draw in ink, we're going to fill this guy up. You can see the uh, ink body filling up just like that. Not the ink body, the pen body, sorry. So we're just going to get this nice and full. Looks like it's got quite a bit of capacity. I'll have to look up the specs of how much capacity. Anyhow, I was trying this out at the Vancouver Pen Shop, and I fell in love. It's a pen that I did notice online, and I was like, hey, that's a really neat pen. I thought, nah, I'll never pick that up, just given that I'd never be able to try it, and I didn't want to take the risk of buying it online, but I got that amazing opportunity again. I had to pause the video for a minute. Uh, there was some screaming and anxiety upstairs from the children, and I uh, figured I needed to go figure out what was going on. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not actually recording at my usual time. Maybe you can't tell, um, but this is closer to a 9 o'clock. And again, I was just really keen to use this pen, and figured I could try and steal away <laughs> and record a video. We'll see. It's a bit of an experiment. Uh, I've been traveling quite a bit recently, and today was the first day in a long while I decided to sleep in. Okay, so the pen body has been filled with the ink for the eyedropper. Um, just going to make sure that that's nice and secure on there grip section. And then you can do this two ways. You can take this guy and draw open the cap just like that. But what I just noticed here as I was playing around with this is you can use your fingers too. It doesn't necessarily need that cap. But um, I think it's really cool just to be able to do it just because of the functionality. So yeah, let's just open this up, let the ink flow in, and we're going to take our cap and screw it on here and it looks like a full-size pen and just for comparison's sake let me draw out my twisby 580 which does not post by the way remember and it's actually taller um, and longer when using that so first impressions of the first rate very exciting i'm very excited about this so this is the Oh, beautiful. This is the Opus 88. I don't know if I let that out enough. There we go. That's probably better. Opus 88 fountain pen. And it, uh, yeah, it's just beautiful, flows evenly, nib is nice and smooth. And the pen is really good to write with. Right off the bat, and I wonder why I didn't pay attention to this in the store, you'll notice that the grip section is incredibly short, like hardly anything there, and then it's got threads. And just by way of the design of how short the pen is when it's un, uh, unposted or capped. And I'm just beginning to wonder if that's going to be an issue with how I write for long periods. Just my fingers rubbing up against that thread section. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. The balance of the pen, it seems like it's even, I wouldn't say evenly weighted, sorry. It's a bit more weighted towards the back, just given the posting. But other than that, I think it'll be a good pen. The ink itself, by the way, since I've got the ink in here, it's kind of a really interesting brown gray mix which I was not expecting it's a very 
uh, subdued brown. Almost like a winter brown, I would say. Might switch that ink out and put something else in for now. And uh, put this ink in closer to winter. Well, that's my quick look at the Opus 88. I'm very excited to be using this pen moving forward and can't wait to do a more in-depth review after a period of months and see if there's things that I like or dislike and, you know, just the idea of the grip section there <laughs> and how that plays out. Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and bye for now.